Hello, my name is Natalie Gill. I am a builder and I'm gonna talk about generative AI. Uh, how are we building this? So this is very important because right now we have on the tips of our hands, a lot of resources, a lot of tools to do new text. That's why it's generative. You're, we are generating new things, videos, images, and a lot of things. But, you know, because this is a hype, there's a lot of things. We see a lot of things. It's important that also we can get uh, some background about what's going on, why is it important, and why we need to pay attention and inform us and be part of this too. This is the podcast, uh, Women Who Code. So where is it coming from, the generative AI? So long time ago, uh, we had researchers that got uh, a lot of, uh, you know, what they wanted to do in terms of they have machines, they have code, and they can mimic the human behavior. In particular, uh, we were talking about math, for instance. Math is always being, being complex, and we are good to resolve bad problems. But machines in general, from the beginning, they were better, faster, and more efficient to resolve those problems. That's why it's artificial intelligence, because it's our intelligence, but in an artificial way. So the idea was to start cracking those math problems. And um, from the very beginning with Alan Turing, um, Newell and Simon, uh, they put together some problems to do that. What happened after all these years with AI was that right now we have more people coding, more people doing algorithms that actually train all these, uh, all these machines. We have more powerful machines. And today we have one more thing, which is a lot of more data. Data is a key where we can get more background, we can get more context, we can get more information to get those machines to improve their learning. That is what we call machine learning. So machine learning is a subset of in general of artificial intelligence where machines start learning from scenarios from data in general. Then we have deep learning, which is now we have multi-layer neural networks and they perform or tasks that are more complex not only as humans, we are resolving math problems, but now we are talking, we are talking with different accents, we are making other sounds, we are, um, you know, behaving. So that's the complex thing that we will need a little bit more of, uh, you know, complexity. And then we have generative AI. So we have all these models, models are finally, you know, complex combinations of code, data. So we can have all these models being able to give us some answers, to give us some context, to give us some solutions. So that's the important part of generative AI. You've seen some of these examples, chatting with chatbots, uh, asking uh, some chats to generate images, to generate videos. Those are the things that we've seen lately. But as I mentioned, there's been decades of work where we put together the machines with the code and the data and right now, why is it important to, to highlight that we have a good acceleration of this? This is what happened. Uh, data storage and processing go cheaper. Now we have a lot of options in terms of um, storing that and processing that, especially in the cloud. On the other hand, we also have good options to be accessed uh, for compute power on the cloud too. So there's a combination of things that wouldn't be possible to do if we don't have all these advancements today to be more accessible to everybody. So if you want to do one of these, what we call large language models, right? Uh, that takes a lot of effort, a lot of money too in compute power and processing. But what's the thing today about this? Uh, there's a democratization of this because we have some companies that are been working for a long time to put these models that, they, what the models do, they can process, process text uh, they also they can understand what I'm chatting about, even if I chat in you know different languages or different you know regional languages, and they can understand that because they already been processing a lot of data from other people like chat or talk like me. But of course, those those uh, large language models they take a lot of effort, money, and a lot of minds to be trained. 
what we're doing right now is that we can refine those models. We can retrain those. We can retrain those with uh, fewer knowledge. We can retrain those with fewer resources and we re can retrain those with fewer data. So what that means is if I get this model, right? Like I want to um, have this customer service a little bit enhanced because I want my agents to be better in terms of they need some guidance because they have a lot of documents and they, you know, they need to navigate to get the best answers to my customers. So now large language models and generative AI and AI in general can process a lot of documents, a lot of context, a lot of things and help them get to a better answer. Even if there's a person, an agent, because if you know you're an, an agent, then you have a lot of things to process, right? Before you get a, a, you give an answer to your customer. Even if it's a person or it's a bot that is processing this, we can get better answers and we can really enhance uh, these people and these chatbots too. So it's not about eliminating people at all on, on these positions. It's also about empowering them, empowering them to, to get better, uh, to, to empowering them to give better solutions, to give better answers. This is how we're evolving. It's not about, again, elim eliminating all the, let's say I have people processing a lot of documents on, on back office, let's say. And then it's not about eliminating them, but giving them better tools, better resources to do their work better. Of course, it's gonna be a little shift in terms of, you know, how, what people do and what how people leverage those tools. We also need to be ready to help everybody to understand that. And we as builders, we need to understand too that we are not really developing things just for the sake of. We are developing things to help other people to get better tools and better resources. Not only people working on back office that they can get you know, better document processing, they can get even like super old documents that they are handwritten. You know, so they can get better information, better data, or the customer facing roles that they can get better answers faster with a context to this particular person. It's not all about all of this because we are also impacting every time we build not only a large language model, if we are there, we are refining the models and we are doing implementing apps that are leveraging generative AI. We are always, always impacting people. So we need to be super aware of that and we that are uh, builders, we are builders in several terms, right? We design, we implement, we architect, we code. So we need to be real aware of who we are impacting. I'm gonna shift to one more thing, which is the responsibility in AI. There's a number of things that large companies, medium companies, small businesses, startups are, are aware when we are building. And it's about having, um, you know, what we we're going to do with this. First, the first thing I mentioned was how we impact people, but it's also about how we, you know, have a feel in terms of having equality for everybody, equity too, having uh, everybody impacted in the same way, or you know, to be fair, uh, that we are not reinforcing biases, for instance. And let me give you one example. Uh, years, years ago, um, I used to use, uh, you know, the IVRs. So you call and you get a voice and you get to, to say some things to understand. And my native language is Spanish. I also speak English, so you can see. But uh, you, actually the learning from this, uh, you know, voice and, and replying to me, wasn't that good in Spanish. It was like 12 years ago. So I use the one in English, especially when I dictate uh, numbers and other things. So this, um, this menu can understand me with my voice. So here's the thing right now, uh, we have, of course, a lot of people talking a lot of different variations of Spanish, a lot of variations of English and a lot of variations of a lot of other things, other languages. So this is also about inclusion, right? We have different accents because we come from different backgrounds or as me, like this is not my native language, but I'm speaking with some accent. And so uh, so th this is important too. If we reinforce the bias, so we train these models, 
with same the same thing as always, right? We've been building also with a lot of biases in the past. And then, so when we develop an app, we develop a model, you build some, some biases around, around uh, people uh, from minorities. From phrase recognition to voice recognition to what population I belong to. So it's important we as builders, uh, you know, take care of that too. So when, so how, so it's not only about building and I have a background, I have a diversity and I'm going to build with diverse perspectives so we can have inclusion when we do our app because we're thinking about, let's say recognition, we uh, put data so they can recognize people from, you know, uh, different countries of the world that they have different type of faces and different colors and everything. So that's important, but also, uh, I don't know, we, you put like, okay, let's sign up and this is a thousand dollars. This is, a lot of people, they don't have a thousand dollars to be on board of this, right? So we need to be very inclusive in terms of uh, how are we developing these this products and apps. What's the problem right now with uh, generative AI and AI in general? Whatever we do is gonna be amplified because right now, well, machines are really learning for a long time already. But right now, right now we have a lot of uh, end user facing uh, tools. Every time I use one of these prompts, every time I use one of these chatbots, every time I use one of these requests, the, machi the machines keep learning. This is what it, it is made for. Every interaction I have, it keeps learning. And this is good because it gets more data and it gets more personalized things for me, but also it gets better things for probably my population. But then if I don't have, you know, a lot of data from different people from different backgrounds, there is going to be biased again. So if I train uh, the models or retrain or refine the models with less data, and so we, we can also do that. So we need to be super aware of that because this is completely and absolutely all the time work in progress. Then we need to be aware that we can be amplifying a lot of this learning if we're also not thinking about biases. So let me go back to responsible AI. Responsible AI, I, I mentioned about how we're building, how this be amplified in terms of inclusion, but there's also other things. We are building a lot of things right now, and then we need to be aware that regulation is work in progress, not only for AI, but also for data, but also for privacy, but also for a lot of other things. So when we are building, we need to be thinking holistically of what's the best to implement today and what's the best to keep in work in progress and adapt. So that's also super important. We as builders are super aware of technical things and how to scale that and to how to make it a, a great adopted by, by our customers or, or you know, whomever we need to impact positively. Uh, but also we need to see that what's behind. So that's the number two. And there's one more thing that I think is super important to mention. And it is that uh, as we use specifically generative AI, it needs a little bit, actually, a way more compute power to execute because you're generating new things. It's not like the machine learn, then they have some, some good answers and we are reusing those answers. So guess what? We have a lot of more compute power use in general in AI. In AI. Um, so there's a sustainability problem. So we need to be very aware of what we're doing, how we as builders, again, are using the right tools uh, to provide value. Because if we're using a lot of this, and then of course we need to pay the bills at the end on whatever platform we are using and leveraging our compute power or data, right? Uh, but it's super important that we take care of this. So just, I wanted to, to chat a little bit about responsible AI because I think it's important that we are aware that what we are building, uh, we are impacting people, so we need to be inclusive. Uh, we're building something that is completely work in progress today. So there's regulations, there's a, a lot of organizations making agreements about how we're going to leverage this. Um, there's also the, the component about sustainability because we're consuming a lot of compute power and electricity and all the resources related to compute power. 
And then it's also uh, around, last but not least, the ethics, right? We need to be sure that we, since this is going to be completely automated, we have the right tools to uh, raise red flags uh, when we're uh, doing something that it's um, that might impact people. I think um, when you see um, the self-driving cars, for instance, uh, if I drive, probably I'll make a decision in some milliseconds. Uh, but when self-driving cars, they have all the variables and they can make a decision faster than me. But there's also an impact if when we are driving, we also uh, can cause harm to people. So uh, that type of decisions to, to code into machines, uh, that's part of the epic side. And, and, and that's, that's it, it's been um, around for a long time. There's a lot of very strong and uh, committed research to, to help, uh, you know, implement those things in, a, in the best way. And this is, of, of course, not only related to what we're going to call the machines to decide, but also um, the regulation around that, the laws. So that's important to, to, to have there. And why I wanted to mention all this is because uh, this is a very exciting time. This is an amazing time to, to build uh, in regardless the the role you have, regardless if you're a technical person of your a uh, in other roles building or making decisions or being a consumer of this, this is super important for 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 us to get to get uh, you know all the minds together to get uh, the best minds also working on this, but also to be aware of all the impacts that we can cause. Uh, if we build something that is not, you know, uh, sustainable, that it, it's not aligned with ethics, that, that doesn't have uh, inclusion guidelines. So that's the important part here. Uh, technically, we have, as I mentioned, uh, we have data, we have compute power, we have a lot of things. We have tools too. Um, I'll mention a, a lot of them, but it's important that um, since this keeps really accelerating, uh, we have a lot of uh, new models, let's say, arising. We have a new, uh, let's say, end user prompts arising too. And the thing right now is that a lot of uh, companies realize that they can enhance AI and generative AI on their tools to impact positively a lot of users. So maybe, uh, what you uh, what you're using today has a type of um, let's say when you're coding, right? I, I tried both uh, Copilot and Cold Whisper from uh, at Microsoft and, uh, and Amazon. So it's good because right now I'm coding and I'm not a, the best coder, but I'm getting a good age in terms of not only the best code to put on some guidelines, but also code but also security guidelines, but also other type of guidelines that I'm not aware of, or I can be aware, but then I you know, need to re-review that because I have top of, that top of mind, but then I have a companion that can help me uh, get to that. So this is for builders, but then imagine somebody you know, putting together a budget that can help me, put it together a presentation that can help me shape something or have a base where I can, you know, um, save a lot of time to, to do this. So there's big platforms right now that have millions of users from Roll uh, that they're using that. And this is for the good of, of people. And then remember, whenever you're using one of these aids or you're using anything related to AI, you're also contributing uh, to make those tools better. So that's important. We have a role regardless if we are hardcore builders, there's people that are been working on this, um, uh, people that are in computer science that, you know, they have doctorates. And so they've been working on this for years and now they see a lot of the things adopted. So uh, thank to them really, because this is not really simple. This is not straightforward. This needs a lot of work, a lot of passion, a lot of uh, stamina and a lot of knowledge to be prepared to leverage that. So we gotta thank them because then right now we have the tools at the tip of our hands uh, and we can do wonderful things. And then remember, last thing, 
you got to do what you got to do, but then you need to remember that you're impacting other people where you're not only building, but you're, you're, you're using and you're also sharing uh, the tools that you're using. So this is what is important uh, to share today. Uh, I wanted to thank again women who called for having me and then uh, keep in touch. And then, as I mentioned, this keeps accelerating. So I really encourage you to do research around the tools that you need, about the tools that you're using, about what's going on today. I can mention something. I mentioned some things, actually. But then this is accelerating. So I encourage you to, to do some research. Hopefully, this helps to understand what's the landscape and how hard this has been uh, for a long time to be implemented and the hard work of a lot of people doing this. So thankfully, this helps you to understand this is not trivial. This is a lot of work and you can leverage that and you can leverage that responsibly and then you can do your own and the best for everybody else. Thank you.